Hello there. I'm here just to give you a quick revision on the labs used in this module, which is the electronics for MM. Okay? So hopefully with this short video, you'll be able to just remember what you're doing in the lab and maybe <coughs> even learn it for the first time. Nice thing about this VCD that you're getting is that you can pause any time and replay as many times as you like and the VCD won't get angry. Okay, so watch carefully. First of all, let's take a look at the digital analog trainer. Uh, it's a very nice piece of equipment, this thing. It's got everything you need all in one box. So let's uh, take you on a guided tour first. The important thing is in the middle is we've got a very special board which we can plug our circuits into. More details about that shortly. At the top we have a row of lights which we can turn on or off depending on what we connect to them. And at the bottom we have a row of switches and those switches can be the inputs for our system. On the top we have a couple of little potentiometers, these are good for controlling things and here we have a power supply which you can just vary how much you have that's going to be on the top left hand side there, 0 to 15 volts you can have and at the same time the same knob is giving you 0 to minus 15 volts so you've got four little pins or little sockets there for the plus 15 and four for the minus 15 then we've got a separate power supply which is one we're going to be using now for our logic circuits on the other side. So what we have here is plus 5 volt supply, there's 4 pins for that, or sockets, and we've got 4 little sockets for the ground, and also they're giving us minus 5 volt supply, but don't normally use those, right? So don't connect to minus 5 volts when you really should be connecting to ground. Very good, let's see what happens. The best way to see how to use this magic box is just to use it. So first of all, I'll just take you around the family of integrated circuits that we're going to be studying. Uh, these are called gates. And what we have inside each integrated circuit here is four or maybe six gates, which are quite handy. And they're all separate. So the first one is the 7400 and that's a NAND gate. I've written it down here because it's very small to see actually on the IC itself. If you look very closely, you can see. Next one, 7402. This is a NOR gate. And the next one, 7404. There are six of these inside here. These are inverters. Then up here, 7408. This is an AND gate. The 7432 is an OR gate. And then the special gate over here, the 7486, is an exclusive OR gate. And I'll be telling you what those actually mean later. To start with, let's just introduce this board and what it does uh, by looking at the, the main gate that's available in the 74 series, and that's the NAND gate. It's actually 7400 because this is the probably the simplest one of... Uh, the gates to make and it's very very important in logic so here we go that's the 7400 in this lab for the connections you can use wires which have been supplied for you lots of different colors it's nice to use red wires for the plus supply the 5 volts and something like blue wires for the 0 volt supply always trying to stick to that convention if you can Okay, let's power up this circuit. Hope you can see on the TV there. Now, I like to put the power supplies first. Just like uh, animals and things, these integrated circuits do need feeding, and we need to give them some power. So, first of all, we'll just, just dig the wire gently into the plus five hole there. You've got four to choose from. And then the other end has to go to the plus input of the IC. Now, which is that? Let's have a little look then at the plus input. Now, let's have a quick uh, look, close look at the IC, if we can. ICs are all about the same outside. There's a little sort of nick in, this, in the end of every IC. Sometimes you have a little spot by one of the pins. But if you look closely, 
Now I'll just try and get it really close for you. You can just about see that there is a sort of indentation. Now you'll probably see easier on that I see there. And that's the show which end is which, because as you can appreciate, you might be able to get the IC the wrong way around, and that could cause big problems. So, what this end is showing you is where pin 1 is. Here's pin 1 as well. So, then you number them anti-clockwise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And what we have here is the IC plugged into this rather nice breadboard, and this means that now we have four spare holes that we can plug wires into so that we can go to other parts of the circuit. Very nice. So what we need to do now is put in the plus 5 volts. Make sure you get it in the right set of holes. So it's the right column of holes. Some people make a mistake and they put it into a hole over here. No, that's not going to work. It's got to be column by column, so it's definitely going to be one of these holes over here. Let's take a blue wire and we'll just go to the whoops, wrong way, go to the power supply again. Plug into the ground and this time we go into the opposite corner which is pin 7. And there you are, that's the supply. And you'd need to do that for all the ICs you're going to use. At the moment, we're just going to use the one IC. Now, let's do something with it. Now, if you just look back at what this IC does, I put my little label there. You've got two inputs going in and one output. And this IC is a decision maker. Now, inside the lab book, You'll actually see that in your experiment, you're supposed to find the gate that you're going to be looking at. So in this case, it would be the 7400. Let's quickly try for you. There's the NAND gate. Here we are. Experiment 2F. It shows you the gate, and it shows you a table that we have to fill in. And the two inputs, we just call A and B. And the output looks quite interesting. Y equals, then it's AB with a line over it. The line over it means not. So Y equals not AB. AB, you used to think of in mathematics as A multiplied by B. And actually, this is a logical analogy of it. You'll see why. Now, what we're going to be doing is going to be putting zeros and ones into our inputs A and B. Now, 0 and 1 is just the mathematical meaning, but in real life it's going to be low voltage and high voltage. So we get that from the switches at the bottom of the board. And I think before we go any further, I just want to show you what the switch does. Just put a wire into one of the switches here. And you've got six little holes to use for that switch. This switch could actually go to six different places at once. And then that wire can go to anywhere on the board. So right for now, I want to show you the top of the board, which where we have the LEDs. I'll just zoom out a little bit now for you, so you can see both sides. And so I'm going to put that wire into just one of these LEDs. doesn't matter which one. And again, we've got six holes to choose from here. And you just wiggle the wire in there. OK, the ball's switched on at the moment, but at the moment the LED is switched off. Now, what do these switches mean? Well, what it is, you've got uh, two states. It's either one or zero. That's what's written at the bottom here. So, let's look at a clearer view. 1 or 0 either means, well, number 1 or number 0. It also means high voltage for 1, low voltage for 0. But we're doing logic. So in fact, my interpretation would be just what we're trying to describe. Is it sunny or not sunny? At the moment, it's not sunny. So we look at the LED, it's off. But when the sun comes out, we say now it is sunny. And so now the LED, is it sunny or not? The LED says it's sunny. 
Not sunny, LED turns off. That's all the switch does. Very nice. It's just a way of telling our little decision-making circuits what's actually happening. So let's tell our circuit here it's sunny or not sunny. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this wire from the sunny or not sunny switch into one of the inputs of this IC. Now where are the inputs? Well, a lot of ICs have got the same kind of arrangement. Here's the data sheet at the back of the book. And you can see that in this case, you've got four NAND gates inside and they all seem to be going from left to right. So one and two go to three, four and five go to six, 13 and 12 go to 11, 10 and 9 go to 8. Most of them are like this, but there are exceptions. Unfortunately, the, <laughs> the normal gates, for some reason, are going in the opposite direction. So they're going from right to left. But the arrangement is more or less the same. Uh, inverters are going from left to right, and the AND gates are going from left to right, and the OR gates are going from left to right. So almost everything is going from left to right, except for, I don't know why I've done it like this, but anyway, um, the NOR gates, for some reason, are going from right to left. So, for most of the cases, it's quite easy to remember that if you just say go to pin 1, that's one input. So now we can tell our IC, is it sunny or not sunny? Now, what else do we want to worry about? Okay, do we have money or no money? Maybe, <laughs> got no money. Let's see, it depends what time of the month it is. So we'll just get another input now, and I'll just take a, an orange wire here, and I'll just use a switch on the right-hand side, any switch will do, and plug that in there, and that can now tell our IC whether we have money or no money. So that goes to the next door input, which is pin 2. Notice that I've put one wire on the first column and second wire on the second column. It doesn't matter which of the four holes that we use. Now we want to see what the output is. So we just take a, a wire, let's use a white wire, and the output of our gate goes to pin 3. So just plug that in there. And let's go to one of the LEDs, maybe over here. Oh, and uh, there you are. We've actually got uh, a light on already. And I'm going to put a little label here. It says at home, not at home. So what we have here is a nice little decision-making setup. Is it sunny? Do I have money? Will I be at home or not at home? So, I could say that if it's sunny and I have money, I'm not at home. Because <laughs> it means when the light goes out, I say I'm not at home. If it's not sunny, I'm at home. Even if i got money, I'm still at home. Or, if it's sunny, but no money, no money la. Then the light's on, which is the top one, at home, I'm at home. So here, you can go through all the combinations. Not sunny and no money, I'm at home. So the light's on, it's the top line here, at home. If it's sunny, but no money, where am I? I'm still at home. If it's not sunny, but I've got money, still at home, I don't want to get wet. And then finally, it's sunny and I've got money, now this light turns off, it means I'm not at home. I'm probably out spending money in the sunshine. So what you would do is you would now write into your book, I'm not going to do all the experiments for you, you can see the rest yourself, but you can write into your book the answers, all the input. So in fact, A, actually for me it was sunny, B is money. I'll write it in for you. Sunny and money. <laughs> and then the result is um, I'll be at home if the light's on. 
you don't have to write this in, but it's good to just think about what this is meaning rather than just zeros and ones, not so exciting. So zero and zero, it's not sunny, no money, is zero and zero, and that means my light's on, so I've got one in this case. And then it's not sunny, but I've got money. What happens now? The light is still on, so a one. I'm still at home. And then it's now sunny, but no money. What am I? Still at home. One. Show the right page. And then finally, it's sunny, and I've got money. Right. I've got the right switch here. And the light's on. So you want to have sunny, so the switch is up. Got money, switch is up. Ah, the light's up. That's the way it is, yeah. So I had something wrong there. So the lights up mean I'm not at home. So now we fill in the table. So we have one, 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 zero. But the actual meaning is at home, at home, at home. Only time I'm not at home is when it's sunny and I've got money. There you are. Now, the other experiments in that experiment two are to try out the other ICs. Now what you can do for this, it's quite easy and you can save money, uh, save time. <laughs> Um, is you can just turn off the supply, carefully take out the IC and put to one side, take the next IC that you want to try out, let's make it for example the 7408, Just like this. Plug it in carefully so it's exactly the right place. Just check with this plus supplies and minus supplies correct. Then we can switch it on again. But this time I'm going to change my label to go to Sentosa, don't go to Sentosa. <laughs> You'll see why in a minute. Okay, so we're on now. First we'll start off. It's not sunny, got no money. Do I go to Sentosa? No. Don't go. So, uh, if it's sunny, but got no money, I still don't go to Sentosa. If it's not sunny, but I got money, still cannot go to Sentosa. So when can I go to Sentosa? I need to have money, and it's sunny. Ah, now I go to Sentosa. So now, with this different gate here, this is an AND gate, not a NAND gate, it's an AND gate. It doesn't have the zero, a little circle at the end there. I now can have the same inputs, but now it's a different kind of decision. With an AND gate, it's saying whether I am at home or not. With a NAND gate, with the AND gate, <laughs> right, it's the opposite answer. So it means I go to Sentosa or I don't go. There you are. And you can try the other gates the same way. The or gate, the nor gate, and so on. And then um, you can just do exactly the same procedure. The only thing I just have to tell you about is that the nor gate, which is the 7402, watch out with this one because those gates go the opposite way around inside the IC. While we're here with the AND gate, I just wanted to show you something. It's a little bit further than the scope of the experiment, but just to show you why we have more than one gate inside the IC. We can make more than one decision, which is quite nice. You see, at the moment, we have a decision taking two inputs. It's sunny or not sunny, money or no money. And then the result is, I go to Sentosa or I don't go. But what about if I've got to decide whether to put on sun oil or not, okay? Well, what I can do, I can put another input in, and that is, do I have fair skin or not? So let's put that there. And I'll put another input then, into here. But, uh-uh, got a problem. My AND gate has only got two inputs. 
Now I've got three conditions. Is it sunny? Do I have fair skin? Do I have money? So what am I going to do? Well, basically I want to know whether or not I have to put on sun oil. Do I need to put on sun oil? So let's put that one over here. And we're going to get the circuit to make that decision for us. Do I need to put on sun oil or not? Okay. Well, let's have a look. What we can do is we can use the decision that we've already got to go to Sentosa or not as our one input for our next stage. So I'll take another wire there. Another white wire, perhaps it's the same place. And we can put that into the same set of holes. Alright, so you've got one wire that's going to the LED and I've got another wire that can go somewhere else. Now let's use another gate. Now I'll do the thinking for you here. Let's use another AND gate and it's another input and I'm going to use the gate in the top right hand corner of this IC. So it's going to be pin 10 I'm putting into now. Pin 10 and pin 9 go to pin 8. Right, that's one input which is do I go to Sentosa or not? Then the other one, fair skin or not, can be the other input of my second gate. And then the answer, do I put on sun oil or not? I use a brown wire, that's quite good for suntan. <laughs> and then I put that into the answer, which is the last pin of the gate, and I put it next to an LED here. So let's try it all out then. So just to summarize, I've got still the same circuit as before, I've got sunny, and money going into my first gate which is the bottom left hand corner of the IC. Then I'm taking the output going to the LED just before. So I'm going to Sentosa now. Alright. Then I want to decide whether to put on sun oil. Well at the moment the LED is out because I'm going to Sentosa but my switch here is on dark skin. So if I've got dark skin I probably don't need sun oil. If I've got fair skin, ah, must put on sun oil. So here we are, put on sun oil or don't use oil. So when it's on, put on sun oil. If the sun goes out, I'm not going to Sentosa and I don't go, I don't put on sun oil. So I don't put on sun oil when I'm at home. Similarly, if it's sunny, I've got fair skin, but I've got no money, again, both lights go out. Why? Because I'm not going to Sentosa, therefore I don't need to have sun oil. So, you see, this is how we can use these little decision-making circuits to decide for us. And already, we're getting three inputs and we've got two outputs here. It's starting to get nice and complicated. But you can just add more and more of these things until you can really make this sort of thing make decisions for you. And in fact, if you have lots and lots of these things, then you've got yourself a Pentium PC. Not bad, eh? Now is a good time just to tell you about another device that's really quite handy and this is called the Logic Probe. So it's this little thing here, it's like a clever kind of pen and the pen's got two lights, there's a red light and a green light. Oh and there's another light here, a pulse light which is on some pens. Now just like the ICs, it needs power and you normally have two crocodile clips. Um, what I've done is I've put wires in these crocodile clips so I've just clip together and put the wire around a couple of times to make it safe. The reason why is there's nowhere on this board here to put my crocodile clips into. So I don't want to accidentally short circuit things. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to feed this pen by putting my blue wire into the ground. I've got three more ground sockets. In it goes. And then the red wire I put into one of the three spare plus five volt sockets. And there you are. It's actually got a lot, little loud speaker as well, which is quite nice. So it can actually actually detect whether there's something touching to the input and so on. You can actually hear it. And um, it's detecting pulse. Because it's actually picking up noise from the air, like probably WKRZ or something. Now, what's nice about this pen is that it can do more than what this LED is doing. The LED at the moment is just showing you whether you have a logic one connected or well we don't know 
Does it mean here, when the light is out, there's just no wire connected, or that there's a logic zero? We don't know. See, what we need to do with the logic probe is to actually find out if you have a logic one or logic zero. But it could be a bad connection or something. So if there's a bad connection, we want to know. And that means, therefore, you have a low. So let's have a look at this switch here at the bottom. We're going to say, is it sunny or not sunny? At the moment, you've got a nice high tone, and it's high, and it actually makes a dee sound. Then, if you switch to low, it's a low note, like that, and then the green light's on. But if you let go, so there's a broken circuit, you don't get anything. So it's nice, you don't have to look at the pen all the time. Just like that. Very good. So you can instantly just probe around the circuit and see whether you have a high or a low. So going to the circuit here, there's a low and a high and a low. Just going around the IC. Be careful when you go around the IC, don't accidentally short the pins together, it's not very nice. And now I've got the logic probe in the hand, let's just see what this other switches over here do, which is quite handy. These are called pulse switches. So here, you've got two switches, pulse A and pulse B. Let's go to A first. Low, press the switch. High, let go, back to low. Right, that's good. Now there's one down here that is not A. It's got A with a bar on top, so let's go down there. It's high all the time, until we press, it goes low. It's the opposite. Same with the B. If you press on B, it's always low unless you press. Go to not B, it should always be high unless you press. Exactly right. This is good, just for putting some kind of data entry. You want to press, like pressing a doorbell. So that's basically everything you need to know about this board here. The last thing I'm going to do is just going to tell you about the last part of experiment three, which is proving De Morgan's theorem. Okay, suddenly you notice that the ball's changed. This is the very last thing I want to show you. This is proving that De Morgan's theorem works. I'm just going to show the first part to you. And that's to show you that if you have a NAND gate configured like this, you've got two inputs going to the NAND gate with an output. That's what we have at the top of the board here. It does exactly the same as an OR gate with the inputs inverted. This is quite handy because if you only have AND gates, uh, if you only have NAND gates and you need an OR gate, then uh, this is how you can do it. And if you have only OR gates and you need a uh, NAND gate, then something related to this, the second part of the experiment, will show you the same thing. So let's have a look. We've got a table here where you have the two possible inputs. The inputs are shared between the original NAND gate and our modified OR gate. That's an uh, OR gate with negated inputs. What we do is we just try the 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 in and see what we get. So, at the moment, we've got our two inputs here and here. You can think of like sunny and money, whatever. 0, 0 gives you 1, 1 at the output, which is what you expect for a NAND gate. 0, 0 gives you a 1. So both of these are the same. Now let's go to 0, 1 click and you get 0, 1 on here and both of the outputs are the same, 1, 1. Okay, and then we just go to 1, 0, just the same as an AND gate, still giving you one output, both are the same. And then we expect when we go to 1, 1, we should get 0 for the NAND gate, we should also get 0 if this is the same. Let's try it out. There you are, it works. So De Morgan was a very clever chap, he's right. Okay, that's it for now. So um, I hope you found this video really helped you. If, uh, and this is only the video for the first term's work. Uh, if you like, uh, have a little bit of uh, uh, a better video next time, you've got some feedback for me, you can just let me know. I'm just jollyan at sp.edu.sg. If you want to help me with the next video, we've got some great ideas, just let me know. Thank you very much.